We recently made videos about the Beechcraft Starship and its closest competitor, the Piaggio Avanti. But I thought we must tell the story of the plane that inspired not just these two major manufacturers, but literally thousands of amateur builders. Moreover, it's not just about the plane. It's about the designer and engineer who not only pioneered many concepts in general aviation, but also holds dozens of aeronautical world records. This is the man who brought the canard wing and composite fuselage to home belts, engineered NASA's first tilt wing, made a non-stop flight around the globe, and built the craft that reached the edge of space. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we review Bert Rutan's Long Easy. Before we dive into the design and specs of today's bird, we must talk about Bert. This is one of those rare cases where it might even be more fascinating than the plane itself. Albert Leander Rutan is probably the only man alive who has influenced the entire aviation field this much. And by this much, I mean that he has designed, co-engineered, supervised, and led the development of dozens of planes. While I usually try to keep the historical part relatively short, I'm sure you'll be amazed by this man's story. In 1965, Rutan worked as a project test engineer for the US Air Force, where he was the lead engineer on the LTV XC-142. By the way, we have a video about it on our channel. But military aircraft weren't really Rutan's thing, so he left the Air Force to become the head of development at BD Aircraft. I'm not sure if Rutan designed the BD-5, the first pusher prop kit plane, but I'd say it's very close to what Rutan would design next. And next came the first kit plane designed by Burt. In 1972, the very vegan was born. Probably influenced by military fighters of that time, as it was named after the Swedish Saab 37 Vigen, this wooden two-seater featured a Delta and canard wing combination, much like current fighters. The very vegan was warmly welcomed by home builders, and Rutan continued improving the design creating the very easy and the star of today's video, the long easy. But before we take a closer look, I just want to briefly mention that Bert Rutan's story didn't end with home-built kits. In 1982, he founded Scaled Composites. To be more precise, Beechcraft made him do that so they could sign a deal with Scaled Composites to work on the Starship. And by the way, is it just me, or does the Starship look like a scaled-up version of the Long Easy, with two engines instead of one? Then, in 1986, Rutan piloted Voyager, the first aircraft to fly around the world without stopping or refueling. This flight took nine days and covered more than 26,000 miles. I think this plane deserves its own video, so let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to watch it. Later on, Rutan designed the Global Flyer, which again broke a record for the flight around the globe, this time solo and much faster than Voyager. Lastly, there's the Spaceship One, the first privately built aircraft to achieve Mach 3 and climb to 69 miles or 367,000 feet. I think this aircraft definitely deserves its own video too. Well, it is what it is. You can't skip the story of a man who ranks in the first half of flying's 51 Heroes of Aviation and has dozens of trophies and medals for his immense contribution to aviation. Now that we know what kind of person built the plane we're reviewing today, let's get to the roots of its design. The Very Vegan was built while Rutan was still working at BD. But thanks to the positive feedback from the kit building community, Rutan left Beatty to create his next plane, the Very Easy. It was essentially a very vegan, but with improved aerodynamics and a new moldless, glass reinforced composite fuselage, making it extremely lightweight. Rutan pioneered the use of composites in small general aviation, and compared to the wooden or aluminum fuselages of that time, it was a huge step forward. Despite the new fuselage technology, the demand for the Very Easy was very high. Likely due to its impressive performance, it showed excellent range and speed. However, it was a bit underpowered. The stated performance was possible only when flying solo, as it was a relatively small plane, and its 100 horsepower O200 engine wasn't quite enough. So, in 1979, Rutan showed the Long Easy to the world. 
Design-wise, it's heavily based on its predecessor, but with all the issues fixed and good parts done even better. First of all, two wings. They are now 33% larger than those on the Very Easy, but the main combination of Delta and Canard remains the same. The Canard here isn't just to prevent stalls, as it is for most planes we've reviewed here. The Canard has ailerons and is directly used to control pitch, while the main wing ailerons control roll. You've probably already noticed the absence of a conventional tail, but it doesn't need one, as there are two rudders on each wing tip, much like on the Starship I mentioned earlier. Second, the Long Easy got bigger. It's easy to see when set side by side with Very Easy, but it's now 16 feet in length and 7 feet high, with a wing area of 82 square feet. Compared to the 50 square feet on the Very Easy, the bigger wing added 300 pounds to its maximum takeoff weight, which means a bigger engine, more fuel, and more fun. So, speaking of the engine, Originally powered by a 115 horsepower Lycoming O235, later kits were modified for the O320, which was capable of 150 horsepower, allowing for shorter takeoffs and increasing the cruise speed by around 10 to 15 knots. These engines now delivered the necessary power for a comfortable 140 knot cruise. While the previous Very Easy could achieve similar speeds, the Long Easy could do so while carrying not only the pilot, but also a passenger and some luggage, and with a much longer range. One of the wow factors of Rutan's scattered planes is their high fuel efficiency. The range is truly exceptional, up to 2,000 miles. Of course, this is an up-to figure, as many factors can influence it. But the aerodynamics of this plane are just amazing, allowing it to burn around 4 to 5 gallons per hour. So, when you combine such endurance, speed, and a relatively low cost to build, it's no surprise that dozens of variants were developed to push these already impressive specs even further. Here are just a few of them. If you think the Lycomings are too slow, just swap them out for two rocket engines. That's exactly what Xcore Aerospace did. The Easy Rocket made its first flight in 2001, piloted by Burt's brother, Dick Rutan, with many subsequent flights. Fun fact, in 2005, the Easy Rocket carried some cargo from the US Post Office, becoming the first documented US mail delivery by a rocket-powered aircraft. If you still want to go faster and further, but aren't comfortable with the twin rocket system, how about a twin Lycoming Easy? Ivan Shaw built one. Also, I want to mention Velocity Aircraft. Heavily inspired by the Easy family, they have built larger aircraft, allowing for up to five passengers. And by the way, we have a video about it on our channel too. But it wasn't just Velocity that thought about more space. So did Steve Wright. He converted his long Easy into an unusual three-seater, the Stagger Easy. If you want to go green, there was the long ESA, powered by a 260 horsepower electric engine. Despite only one being built, it showed pretty good performance, 170 knots. It would be interesting to check its endurance, though. Speaking of endurance, the original Long Easy was already one of the longest-range experimental home-built. But Bill Allen's modification, the Long Distance Easy, pushed it to another level. It featured a large additional fuel tank in place of the passenger seat, while luggage was stored in underwing pods. I haven't found any info about its maximum range, but I guess it could easily double the original Easy. There are definitely many more modifications of the original kit. These are just the ones I found online. But I was thinking, why hasn't anyone put a Rotax in instead of that old Lycoming? I guess it's safe and trusted, but I see how a light, fuel-efficient yet powerful 916 IS could probably give you an extra 10% in speed and range quite easily. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. In case you're looking to buy one, there aren't many for sale. And even if you find them, be sure to inspect every single detail. As with all home builds, manufacturing is not regulated. There are some for around 40 grand, but they definitely need some work to be done. Well, wrapping up this video, this isn't a plane for everyone, that's for sure. I personally know quite a few pilots who would choose a trusty Cessna or Piper over the Long Easy. 
and I get their point. But if you're an adventurous soul and don't mind all the attention when you land at the local airfield, this is the bird for you. It easily outperforms anything in its price range, and while maintenance and service might be a bit more tricky, in my personal opinion, it's worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the story of the Long Easy. And if you did, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.